What's up guys? My name is Victor. This is Matt. Hmm? This is Jesse. Thank you guys so much. We have been arrows in action. Bye! I'm just gonna stay high. It's crazy that we met in Gainesville, like, I don't know how many years ago at this point, like eight, ten years ago. Like, Jesse and I met when we were both, like, when we, I was a freshman and he was a sophomore in college. And when we started this band, there's been so many different iterations of it. There's been different players throughout all of it. Meeting Jesse was such a special moment um, because I was literally playing in another band at the time. Um, I was opening for a band called I Fight Dragons and Jesse came up to me while I was still on stage, like not even off the stage yet. We were walking off and he's like, hey man, like, I love your band. Uh, I have a band, we'd love to play with you sometime. And it's so funny, like to go from there to having this person who I trust with my life, to have that sort of trust in each other and to see the success that we've gotten um, is so amazing. And I love that man. It's great. I love both of you. Not die. the sound sweet begins. So I, I started playing with Arrows in Action when I was um, I was also playing in like five other bands at the time in college, and I uh, agreed to sub in on bass temporarily for Arrows in Action uh, to help Victor out because Victor had gotten me some other gigs, and um, and then I ended up realizing that. You know, they're just when you meet the one uh, and I, I just quit every other band <laughs> and uh, switch to the main thing that I actually do and, and went from there. Vic and I have been in the band most pretty much the whole time since I don't even remember when, like 2014 or something. Um, so we have seen this from like the nothing stages together. Um, so you know obviously not the Matt's not but victor's like the og partner in crime from early early days um so to have someone like that to help see a vision out is really cool in the band there's like a very specific dynamic i think that we've established or like rather that is developed um where i feel like jesse has a very clear vision of like where this band is going to go. We need a bigger banner. Wait. Matt? What banner? I know that I am the bluntest band mate. I'm the big, the big dreamer in the band. You know, I want us playing arenas and stuff, becoming the, the biggest band in the world. I will kind of have more, not the opposite, but like the other Part of that where i'll be like right but is the like is the is the art doing like what we want it to do and like it doesn't matter how successful we are which is not how you want to run a business ever um and i think that matt like really sees both of our sides of this and really balances this out really well uh, he's often the tiebreaker i'll call matt the tiebreaker when you know we have differing opinions or ideas Matt helps us find a middle ground. Not even tiebreaker is not even the right word. He's the the uh, facilitator. I, f I often feel like I'm the the middle of 
extremes. Like if Jesse feels one way and Vic feels the opposite, I usually completely feel a little bit of both. New hearts breathe life into mine and I see <laughs> But they never stay for the night Cause I hope that you might Wake up and fill up the space With all the late nights and some pretty face But I I think that sometimes as a band member I can get like hung up on certain songwriting ideas or like or I'll get stuck on certain lyrics or like a lack of lyrics um, and I think especially that's where really Matt and Jesse have really come to be such amazing friends and bandmates and co-workers and that like we've really started writing together as a group and like whenever one of us is having a bad day or not even a bad day just like isn't like where they want to be like the other two of us really come in and, and support which i think is great i think i am super cautious i think i ask a lot of questions so when we're making big decisions i think i'm just as an anxious person i'm very curious and constantly so you know i'm i might be the person who's bringing a subject up for the third time in a row to really deliberate over it um but i think that that's good so. say what you wanted from me i forgot Our writing process for each album, I think, starts immediately after the last album. And what that means is just sort of like, whether I'm just taking a Sunday to kind of play with guitar riffs or like mess with lyric ideas, or I'm just listening to as much music as I can to like get inspiration or just like, be like, oh, this key sound is really cool. Like, it, it almost starts as like this, uh, like exposure period, I think, like in my mind. And then after a couple months, you know, uh, because usually right after we put out a record, we're promoting that record. Um, after a couple months of promoting the previous record, then we'll kind of sit down and start to mess with like song ideas. We, we definitely have a, a very collaborative songwriting process. Um, it's uh, at, at the minimum, it's th the three of us, uh, plus almost always our producer, Dan Swank. Arrows in Action is they have my heart uh like they were one of the first bands that i worked with in nashville probably about three years ago we just really clicked and i i from the moment i heard them and met them and hung with them and watched them do their thing i i believed in them that it could work and so like we've just put in a ton of hours together and it's not always been ideal by the you know technical terms like whether it's working in a tiny room or not working on the best gear, like we've we've always just put our heads down and gone to work. You me? That we cut out could be something else. Something else yeah. that goes with the guitar. Are you saying like the start of the verse is hitting the chorus? Who, who's the space tag. in the? Who's the space? All it takes is one bad. Uh, like they overlap. You know, a good portion of our songs are, of course, things that Victor has started um, lyrically or even just a melody or both. Um, and then he has a place where it's coming from and we try to all go there and help grow it, and finish yeah. it. So just to, just to kind of clarify, Dude. I guess like the kind of lines that I want to go for, cause, cause melodically like we're fucking on it and I love like the direction for like the intention for the song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be where in the earlier days of like our Be More EP and before that, I would kind of either write on the fly or bring in lyrics um, and kind of have most of it there. I'll usually get together with Matt and Jesse and be like, I have this idea for this. I don't know where the lyrics are gonna be, but like, 
this is the progression for the chords. Like, this is how the verse goes, this is how the chorus goes. But what's been really cool about writing since Be More and writing on Built to Last and writing on everything since then is that it's become a lot more collaborative. Oh, oh my god! god. I, I can't wait! wait. Oh my wait. god! There is no vent above us. What? 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 A song can start any number of different ways. Either we're going for a specific feel, or maybe Matt has a little riff uh, that he wants to turn into a full thing, or Victor's got like a theme idea, or even like a chorus melody ready to go. And then, you know, we we whatever piece we already have, we get it down. I almost imagine it's like a like a train, just like slowly like moving forward, and then we are we just start throwing out ideas. It's very like, oh, what if we did this? And then like, oh yeah, and then we can we can add that and we can add this and it kind of like starts to take form even if we don't have, even if the song doesn't even have an identity to start with, quickly like the, the filter of the four of us um, turns it into something exciting. And the other portion of the songs are things that we do genuinely just start ground up in the room. And that, that is different for, um, who's with us and what we're talking about. I think a song like Checking In is a great example of a ground up one because like we made the instrumental with Dan and then we were all talking about sort of losing touch with old friends and things we were missing out on um, by doing music. And uh, this instrumental relates to this topic and just grew it from there. <laughs> and how good it sounds. What is There's it? a reason for that. Is it something? He got a dog in him! He got a dog in him! He got a dog in him! Easy. 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 The pendulum swings and the distance it brings Are you feeling it too or is it just me? So I try to rewind to the place and the time Where it all made sense, tell me we're still friends Just checking in, hey how you been? It's been so long, swear that I still exist I missed your call, it's no one's fault such a cool collaborative thing that like we can go in any day and have no idea what it's going to turn into especially once everyone's ears gone like if someone comes in with one idea once the other three of us are listening to it it completely shifts and it's so cool to see like what might have been a rascal flat song turned into like i don't know something i can't even explain like you're doing it really well i think there's just a couple oh, so you're, you're talking about vibrato okay. yeah i think there's a couple you could just do a little less on yeah one more night with you one more night with you, with you. Okay. How you soften up on that surf? Yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 oh, oh, oh. yeah. Re replay, replay, replay. That's it over, but I. One more night with you, yeah, 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 you, you, you. One more. I know I can't. <laughs> Wet, sticky, and fucking gross. It's gonna be very sticky. We only play sticky shows. I don't know if you can use that. No. Um, my name is Jesse. I really like this song. What? I'm not even drunk. Good news, I swear.
Yeah, yeah I get nervous before every show. So my, my pre-show mentality is like, I'm usually just freaking out and then a couple songs in then I'm like really enjoying it and trying to like, I wish it was happening slower kind of thing and really appreciating it. We don't have a, a thing. I, I sort of, I, I want to establish that. We do a group hug before every show now. I've, I've asked that we do that. I will say Matt, Matt always gets together for a group hug, which I appreciate. I forget to do that. So that's always nice just to kind of have a second to breathe. I, I like to sort of like punch the air. I don't know why. I don't really know where that came from, but I know there's videos of me doing that backstage. Uh, Push-ups can be good. I think we've done that before. Uh, Look at those pistons just pumping, pumping away. <laughs> My face hey, is Hey, TikTok is a hit. Cause it just did I didn't breathe properly during the push-ups. We don't do shots before shows as much anymore. Um, but I'm all for it. Uh, I, I think we could get used to that. Might have a beer just in the hour before we go out, but like I usually warm up uh, every show about an hour before we go on stage. I'll do a 20 minute warm up. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. Mommy made me mash my M&Ms. <laughs> to find each other like um especially like in, in new york there's a busy green room guest list was big and we let other people have the guest list so it's just chaos it's friendly chaos it's lovely to see everybody but like uh yeah no so <laughs> group, group hug before we go on and then i'm nervous so i probably you know pee eight times or something so. oh, yeah. <laughs> We're just sort of hanging out. We're just sort of sitting on the couch and like, you know, we're getting changed into our clothes, but like ultimately we need a couple seconds just to like get ready for it and then just walk out and have a hell of a good time. We've done this hundreds of times now, just like say some goofy stuff before we go on to like, kind of like get into that flow and yeah, just kind of like remind ourselves that we know we know what we're doing. I like the way you kept me around as your weakness. Keychains and flowers couldn't fix what I was. Silence and habit made me think we could keep this away from the fray. Left with nothing to say. My mama said those who don't listen or feel this. What doesn't kill me makes me worse than I was. If I close my eyes, then it still feels like the first kiss around. Right before we took the stage in Gramercy Theater, um, we were backstage, you know, just saying like, holy shit, we're here. Like we were here like months ago, supporting Magnolia Park and this room, it, it didn't feel like we could like play that room or something, or it felt like, you know, maybe the, maybe we'll get here at some point. Gramercy Theater, good place. 10 out of 10. I wanna come back here. Six spot. I'll be right back. I usually don't get too nervous before before shows. Uh, that show specifically, I do remember being a little bit nervous. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> this is pretty cool. Do you remember? I remember, I remember when there was 10 people there in your own hometown. There was just some like energy around it. We knew it was gonna be our biggest show. We had been there before uh, supporting another tour and now we were there headlining it. I definitely felt some sort of like pressure to uh, like, I don't know, to perform, even though he had just played, you know, 20 shows ahead of it. And it was all fantastic. Um, a lot of excitement, you know, where we do like a little group hug and try and, you know, hype each other up and just like get excited for what that is. What was going through your head right before you stepped out onto the stage? Um... Oh my God, I hope I don't fuck up. <laughs> and I did <laughs> a couple times, but that's part of it. It was so surreal to walk out on that stage, to have that much space, to have that many people screaming our words back to us. Um, and honestly, as funny as it sounds, it just got me. I just, I remember standing out there during soundcheck and being like, 
I can't wait till we do the next one that's bigger. You know, like I, I know it's gonna be and it's gonna feel even better, but like right now, this is the biggest thing we've ever done and I'm gonna lose my mind tonight. What, you just, you just start describing the plot of Click like it's something you have never heard of before. <laughs> Had a great time. Um, you know, I thought they might have us in the first half there, but like, you know, we pulled through. Yeah. Uh, it was tough. We beat them. It was a tough battle to the death uh, in this game of death ball that we just came back from. It was us, arrows in action versus everyone. The devil. Oh. If all we are is fleeting, what's the price to pay? Didn't think I'd make it here, that's my mistake. Feels like everybody here knows what to say. Cleveland was very, very good. Fucking amazing. That was the best show we've ever played here. I think we played May Halls. This is our fourth time. There were so many friends coming up to the stage. I loved it. All of our friends crowd sir. Fuck yeah, Detroit. You're amazing. I feel massage. I could do it all over again. That was fun. That was very fun. Who gave me these? This is fucking nuts. This is our biggest, this is our biggest headline show ever. I don't have any other words right now. I'm so sweaty. Hi, Mom. My lies, my in every motive You know, weirdly enough, I think uh, it's some of the off days are some of my favorite moments. Like on this last headlining tour we did, we rented an Airbnb for uh, Honey Revenge and for Finnish Ticket to stay in while we stayed in our bandwagon uh, across the street and to have just a whole day of like getting food, having beers, just like playing games and playing music with each other and being able to have like a fire out back. Like it was such a fun way to get to know everybody better um, and to just like establish this little community on the road. The shows are amazing. It's hard to pick like one of like one best show or one favorite moment, but I think those moments outside of the shows are really special to me. We out here, we just played Orlando last night. We just stayed at mom's, Matt's mom's house, and it's so nice. She made us breakfast, and we're playing Jax tonight, so let's go Duval. Hi, hey, everybody. Buddy. Hope you guys are all having a good day out there. If it's been a long string of shows, it might be a very restful day. Often, that's how we spend our off days, is just either we're chilling in like the hotel or, or the van or whatever it might be, um, you know, take some time to get some coffee, maybe call loved ones. That's a big one. Off days are the easiest day to take to call uh, like family, friends, and actually catch up with people because every other day feels so hectic. Even if you have a few hours of time, it just feels it just feels crazy, even if it might not be any specific day. But having an off day to like uh, I can take an hour to talk to somebody and not feel like I've immediately got to run or I've got a shower or I need to take a nap or something. It's, it's for me personally, time to chill. Whee! What'd you say? I said I'm taking my pants off. Why? Uh, we have entered the sick portion of the tour and uh, we will come out better people because of it. <laughs> so we got a nice little off day today. Um, we're driving to Raleigh. How much longer do we have, Matt? Uh, an hour and twenty. Almost an hour. Matt was dead, but he is now risen. Uh, yeah. We wanted to get matching tattoos. We actually already have another matching tattoo. So we need the album symbols tattooed. So I assume this is going to be a, a series of tattoos over the course of time. Um, but yeah, we got the, the built to last symbols on us from uh, our first record, which seemed very fitting. They're, they're very tattoo worthy uh, icons, I guess. It was fun. It was right next to the venue Velvet Underground in Toronto. So my first international tattoo as well. What you doing? Getting a tattoo on my back. It's going to be sick. I'm ready. I'm not scared at all. 
Gonna get the rosemary, the lotus, and the moon with the eye for the album. I'm really excited for tonight. Why? Because it's the biggest show outside of the country that we've ever played. Outside of our country we've ever played. I think like 300 people. Um, right there? We got it done, baby. Let me see. A little swollen right now, but it's all of good. Of course it is. Very yeah, happy so with all this Hell yeah. Matt, let me see. Matt? Nice. Matthew? Great. I know she knows she's got me in the palm of her hands. Whoa. Yes, I'm only good enough when she says I am. She's so sweet only when she needs something from me. I love the way. Matt and Jesse and I moved in with each other. We had had our, our buddy Jacob managing us because we decided that was what we needed to really become like legitimate and to have some like an outside person being able to monitor all this and objectively say, this is going to work, this isn't going to work because we can believe in ourselves all we want and we can think something's a great idea, but if it's just not, then it's just not. Before we quit our jobs and we're working full time for the band, like we always knew each member of the band would do what they had to with their job to make it work for the band. I remember writing a lot of my college papers in a Dunkin' Donuts while we were recording the EP, uh, just to be a part of it, just to get my other shit out of the way. I was just obsessed with it pretty quickly for some reason. It's been a little scary to move into a house together and to just hunker down and write as many songs as we can. There's so much trust that goes into this between Matt and Jesse and, and Jacob and I and, and everyone that we work with, but especially the four of us. I think I, I used to have doubts and used to be afraid of it going away a lot more a while ago, a couple of years ago, maybe. Um, and every once in a while, it still creeps back up. You know, the, the, the biggest fear, obviously, right, is that um, no one shows up anymore and no one cares. And... Uh, and then it, it fades away, you know. But it's funny because we were doing this when no one cared. And we were doing it with ridiculous confidence. And I have no idea how or why. Um, well, no, I, I do. It's Jesse. So I think his ridiculous confidence sort of has gotten me out of that mindset. So it's been a while since I've had the fear that, like, it's all going to crumble and go away. But that's the biggest fear is that we book a tour and we put out music. And then randomly one day, no one cares about it. The biggest fear is just not, you know, like f failing, but I feel like we can't fail. I feel like we've, we've, we've succeeded in a lot of ways. I don't think it's like, did you succeed or did you fail? Like it's all along the way. So I don't know. My biggest fear would be if we like all hated each other when we broke up and everybody talked about how much we hate each other. And I don't think that's going to happen. So maybe that's not an actual, that's like a fake fear. Not something that I'm actually worried is coming out. believe in us so very much and our ability to just adapt and figure it out whatever those whatever whatever the doubts may come i i usually try and turn that into all right why am i doubting that and how do we stop it like how do we fix that am i worried like this won't work or that won't work why and try and figure it out we project like the very like happy-go-lucky funny thing because that is the honest truth that is how we spend 99 percent of our time but yeah like every moment's not uh easy there's a lot of really hard decisions that have to be made and when you know three people who are as different as we are, are like sort of making those decisions together it gets difficult i bet you can't use this tonight on stage <laughs> Remember 
chicken not great for symbols. I would say we've done a good job internally of like being good together, you know, like as, as friends, as bandmates, as co-workers and all that. So the hardest part I would just say is making it, trying to make it. You know, we didn't always know what the trajectory was, especially before we had any sort of like online, like true following. Um, it has always been so validating and just also, um, I don't know, exciting, supportive, just to have that sort of trust in our, in, in each other and in your friends is huge. It's finding our sound and trying to understand like what we are in this, in the realm of music and like among our peers and then translating that into something that works. It's a weird, it's a weird thing trying to, you try to make music for you, make music that you really like. Um, and then hope that you can then translate that to something that your fans and, you know, broader audience will like too. Who, who saw us perform at this same venue in March? Oh, hell yeah. Does anybody remember our banner from that show? It was, it was uh, about one-tenth of the size of that one. Jesse put it in the dryer. It was very, it was very goofy. We we considered hanging it in front of the new one, uh, but we thought that might not make sense to anyone who wasn't here. Anybody here? And it's it's okay if if you haven't. Has anybody here literally never heard of Aaron's Mansion? We got one, two, three, four. All right, dozens. Okay, cool. Welcome to the family. Yes, right. we we are so glad you're here because if, if I had not heard of us, there's no fucking chance I'd be here. There's no no shot. So we appreciate, we appreciate you. Along. Concert monies are very important to the music economy. Yeah. We, we appreciate you being here. Uh, fans are everything. I feel like, um, I don't know, it's kind of crazy to me that we have uh, enough people who um, care that much that we can sustain anything. Walking out and seeing the crowd just feels unreal. You know, uh, I, I would always say, it was hard for me to realize that like this was a new group of more than 500 people, you know, like the idea that that many people were seeing us in different cities every time was mind blowing. I know what it feels like to be a fan of an artist and to imagine that many people feeling that way or beyond uh, is crazy. You create the art from an introspective place so that it always stays original and it stays, uh, you know, interesting to you. But then they're the people consuming it and making their own art with it and enjoying it and you're interfacing with them. So, you know, they're fucking everything. So. I feel like what separates, you know, us from three years ago to now is fans. Um, obviously we've grown as well, but I don't know. That's what makes it feel so real is the fans seeing them listening along and coming to shows and singing the words and being able to have people who are so excited by what you're making um, changes the whole thing you know, changes every part of it. We might have had like, you know, a couple people at a show and like to have that has always been amazing, whether it's been one person, whether it's been three, four, a hundred, but like to scale the the seven people that would be at an early Arrows in Action show up to the 400, 500 people that come to a show for us now is so mind blowing. And to know all the love that came from like 
the seven people that would come and see us at our first shows, like at the Atlantic in Gainesville, to know that's scaled up that big and like to know how I care about the bands that I love and to relate that to them is so crazy to know that like people love our band that much, that we mean that to people, that people get tattoos of our music. Like it really shows me that what we're doing is whether it's important, whether it's unique, whether it's special, you know, whatever you want to consider it for our fans, it's really cool to be able to be that for somebody. I have very big aspirations for the band, but I think where I definitely see us is still making music that we love, um, playing to our fans, and hopefully the biggest we will we'll ever be, you know, the number one band at the end. That's how this works, right? It's kind of like a winner takes all sort of deal. Where do you see Arrows in action in the future? Where are you guys trying to go? Uh, the moon. Um, Wembley. I mean, it's funny because, like, this kind of touches on how, like, Jesse will often have a lot more of, like, a vision of, like, this is where we're going to be. We're going to take over the world. And honestly, him having such a lofty, like, big goal is really easy to fit within. Because I go, yeah, take over the world, what he said. And anything below that is still pretty sick. If we don't take over the world and we play Wembley, that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but... International touring, uh, touring throughout Europe, touring Australia, you know, touring the States again, obviously, we want to do a world tour at some point. The dream would be 60 years old, doing anniversary tours with the boys, um, and yeah. I think that, I know people always joke about, you know, bands break up because there's egos and um, people don't want to sound like that anymore or or they can't push through the difficult times or anything but like i don't know just looking at everything that we've done so far and the way that we solve our issues and the way that we celebrate our wins i, I genuinely think this will last a long time uh and i think i think our fans are in it too it's not all one kind of person there's a lot of different <laughs> dynamics at an arrows in action concert and that gives me a lot of hope for the future I started the band when I was in college, and I mean, if you, real easy, if you had told me then that we would be where we are now, I don't think I would believe it. The fact that we just get to do this uh, as our like careers uh, is something many, many people you know, wish for, and I absolutely was wishing for at that point too. So, um, incredibly proud. It's been. It does. It, it it feels like it hasn't been as long as it has, um, but you know, in a in a weird way, it feels like we've only just begun. You know. Some things never seem to change, and every day I stay the same. When life's falling through the trees, it never seems to wane. Sometimes I feel like I'm a silhouette, like my imitation leads me towards regret. Sometimes I wish that we had never met I'm begging every step You're stealing all the breath out of my lungs Got me in the dark speaking in tongues Tell me when did this stop being fine We're untaught and uncomfortably not safe You're stealing all the... Tell me when did this stop being fine We're untaught and uncomfortably not Fuck yeah And the most excited I've been about this uh, music that we've been working on out of everything that we've ever done. Uh, this first full length that we got to put out was 
so cool because it got to be so eclectic and so different and we get to do whatever we wanted and now it feels really cool to be able to get another crack at a record and not even necessarily dial in the sound better but to be able to take a new approach to it or like you know we've we've done certain things on built to last that we don't necessarily need to do again and we can take an entire new approach to this record whether that's lyrically whether that's sonically whether that's just like thematically color wise get ready for new colors um and I'm really excited to see where like this fun new era of arrows and action ends up. I think I, I see it growing into something um, that can last our whole lives. I genuinely do. Just incredibly proud of what we've been able to do. Very excited for the future. I feel like we're, we're always moving forward, coming up with new ideas, trying new things. Um, and just having the blast. So, yeah, very excited to see where it goes. But if if this was where it was for the rest of time, I would be ecstatic. The seasons change, we stay the same till we're blue in the veins. I need the pain to soon my singing would be ready. Stealing all the grass out of my life. Got me in the dark, beginning in dark. Show. Fun. Jesse, how was the show? Yeah, it was bad. Oh. What are you looking for? Well, you know what I'm looking for. Yeah, what? You know what I need. What do you I got what I need. I was born at 2 in the morning on a Tuesday in a thunderstorm. So, you know. I don't know what that means. The world's tallest mountain is underwater. <laughs> Ready to play a rock show. <laughs> Every time you clap your hands, um, an angel gets his hand. Anything but this, Hunter. You said you want to beat the ass. <laughs>